Hi, I'm Jimmy. In this video, we're going to walk through the PEG ratio. PEG is short for price to earnings growth. The goal of this video is to help us better understand the PEG ratio and hopefully be able to use this to help us make better investment decisions and ideally get us closer to our goal of achieving financial freedom. Okay, so what is the PEG ratio? Well, the PEG ratio is a way to account for the growth of a company's earnings when it comes to valuing a stock. So many of us have heard of the very popular price to earnings ratio. To illustrate what the price to earnings ratio is, we're simply going to take the price per share of the stock, and then we're going to divide that by the company's earnings per share. So we have two examples that we're looking at. We're looking at Intel and AMD. I'm using these because I recently did a video where I analyzed Intel stock, so it's fresh in my mind. Okay, so Intel over the past 12 months has an adjusted earnings per share of $5.17. AMD, on the other hand, over the same time period, has a adjusted earnings per share of 69 cents per share. Okay, simple enough. And as of the shooting of this video, Intel is trading at about $48.50 per share, while AMD is at about $77.67. So, if we were to do this quick math, well, we can see that the P-E ratio for Intel is about 9.3x, and for AMD, it's about 112x. So, what does this mean? Well, to simplify it, it means that for every unit of earnings that the company generates, for every dollar of earnings that the company generates, for Intel, we'd be willing to pay $9 for $1 of earnings. We pay nine, and the company earns $1 for every $9 that we pay. And if we bought AMD, well, we would be paying $112 for a dollar in earnings. Now, if we knew nothing else but this information, we might look at this and say, well, that's crazy. I would never pay 112 times earnings when there's another company that's similar to that, but we can only pay 9.3 times earnings. But now, what if I told you that between now and 2024, the expected growth of Intel for their earnings per share is it's expected that Intel will grow by about 3.6% per year. Meanwhile, AMD is expected to grow at about 36% per year. Well, this is a completely different story. We should be willing to pay more for AMD since AMD is bringing, in this case, a lot more growth to the table. Okay, so now we know that the price to earnings ratio is how much we're paying per unit of earnings. What the PEG ratio does, PEG, don't forget, is short for price to earnings growth. Well, what it does is, is it tells us how much we're paying per unit of expected growth. Essentially, the PEG ratio standardizes the P ratio and adjusts them so you can compare different companies with different growth rates. So it standardizes the PE ratio and makes it a bit more usable. All we do now is we take the PE ratio and we divide that by the expected growth rate. So for Intel, we take the 9.3, that's the PE ratio, we divide that by the 3.6% expected growth of earnings, and we end up with a PEG ratio of about 2.6. Okay, simple enough. Now with AMD, we take the 112, divide it by the 36.2% expected growth rate, and we get a PEG ratio of 3.1. Now we should recognize that the lower the number, the, the lower the PEG ratio is, the better. So for the case of Intel, well here we can see that we are paying, we are paying a PE of 2.6 times each unit of growth. So are we willing to pay 2.6 times each unit of growth? And for AMD, we're paying a PE of 3.1 per each unit of growth. And this is one of the advantages of the PEG ratio. Initially, the numbers looked to be insane. If we were only looking at the P-E ratio, well, in that case, we go with Intel hands down. But thanks to the PEG ratio, well, now we can see that relative to Intel, AMD may not be quite as overpriced as we originally thought since they have much better growth. But the flip side of that, or the weakness of the PEG ratio, is that the PEG ratio doesn't account for risk. Neither does the P-E ratio, but when we add a growth, clearly that doesn't account for, uh, for risk anywhere in that. So now we might look at this and say, okay, what if we think Intel is more risky? They are coming off of some bad news. Uh, they recently delayed 
some major products that they've been working on due to operational issues, which is never a good thing. Meanwhile, AMD is pumping out better and better products. So perhaps the 0.5 spread between AMD's and Intel's peg ratio is perfectly justified. Or perhaps we look at this and we say, Intel is a safer company. After all, if we added up the revenue that AMD has generated, not the profit, the revenue that they've generated going all the way back to the fourth quarter of 2015, all the way up to today, well, Intel has more cash than that on hand right now. Cash and cash equivalents. So that's a big difference. Intel's second quarter alone generated more revenue than AMD has over the past two years. So perhaps Intel is a safer company. Now, clearly the market has an answer to this question. Right now, they're saying, who's riskier? Well, Intel is riskier. That's why it's trading at a discount. Or perhaps it's undervalued or AMD is overvalued. Maybe both. The question is, do we agree with the market or do we have a different opinion? And that's, at the end of the day, really an opinion thing. So there is one other thing that we should consider with the peg ratio. Technically, when the peg ratio was created, it was designed to compare numbers to the number one. So if the ratio came in at higher than one, then it was overvalued. If it came in at one, it was fairly valued. And if it came in at less than one, then it was said to be undervalued. And in theory, if we invested in the undervalued companies, companies with a peg ratio of less than one, it would return better for us in theory. Now, I was curious how often a company might actually fall below one. So take this for what it's worth, worth since it's just Intel. I pulled down Intel's historical numbers going back to 2015. And from the data that I could find, it looks like they never fell below one. Now, this ratio was originally created in the 1960s. And I'm not 100% sure that the implication there is that the multiples would always stay the same throughout history. And I'm not sure that's a fair assessment to make. But either way, this doesn't necessarily mean that there's no use for the peg ratio. I think that it makes sense to simply add the peg ratio to something that we watch. And as we illustrated with AMD and Intel, it can help provide another piece of information. And it's another thing for us to consider when making investment decisions. I also think it can make sense to combine the peg ratio with another viable valuation method. If you're curious to see some more choices for how we can value different types of stocks or different types of industries, well, I actually did a video on that exact topic where I run through some of the popular valuation methods. If you're curious, perhaps that could be a good next video for you to watch. I've got a link right here. I've got a link in the description below. And thank you so much for sticking with me all the way to the end of the video. I really appreciate it. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next video.